Learning how to get around a city is one of the basic skills you need to acquire as soon as possible. And in today's video, we are going to explain everything you need to know about Lisbon's public transport system. Hola, tudo bem? I am Tony Galvez from Road Trips Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. As is the case in most European capitals, Lisbon's public transport is excellent. In addition, the city's transport system is, by its own merits, one of the city's major tourist attractions. Lisbon's system is made up of several types of transport, which we are going to talk about in the video. They are the metro, the eléctricos, trams, the elevadores and ascensores, elevators and funiculars, the autocarros, the buses, the convoyos, the trains, the barcos, the boats, and taxis and platforms such as Uber. We're going to talk in detail about each of them and in the final part of the video we're going to present you the public transport tickets that you are going to use to travel in the mentioned transports. Lisbon's metro, the city's underground or subway, is an excellent transport system for getting around the city quickly. The network is not very large and currently has four lines. The red line from the airport to San Sebastián, the green line from Telleras to Cais do Sodré, the yellow line from Odivelas to Rato and the blue line from Reboleira to Santa Polonia. In the center of Lisbon, served mainly by the green and blue lines, there are several useful stations that you should know about. Restauradores on the blue line gives access to Rocio train station from where trains depart to Sintra. Baixa Chiado on the blue and green lines is an excellent access point to the center of Lisbon. Cais do Sodré on the green line is the departure point for trains to Cascais and also for many boats crossing the Tagus estuary. Rocio on the green line puts you in the heart of the Rocio region with easy access to Rocio and Figueira squares. Rocio train station is also very close and Tejero do Paso is the closest station to Praça do Comercio. The Lisbon metro runs from 6.30 in the morning to 1 a.m. Monday to Sunday including public holidays. The signaling at the stations is very good with signs indicating the way out and also showing where other means of transport are as well as signs showing the location of the lifts. There are also maps of the network to help you navigate your way around Lisbon. In the case of stations where you can transfer to other lines, this transfer is also very well signposted. On the platforms, a display shows the time remaining until the next train arrives. How are tickets validated? To enter the station, you have to hold your ticket up to the reader next to the station entrance barriers. To exit the stations, you will have to repeat the same operation. The metro is an excellent means of transport for getting to places served by the network. It allows you to beat Lisbon's congested traffic and get to places faster. It only loses out to the bus and trams in the charm department, as seeing the city at street level is much more interesting. And we cannot end this section on the Lisbon metro without pointing out that it is much more than just a means of transport. It is a gigantic work of art, with each station more beautiful than the next. The Lisbon metro network is a marvelous example of public art that puts it on a par with other famous metro networks in the world. In Lisbon's case, of course, tiles are at the center of many of their artistic interventions. It would be impossible to present all the stations here, who knows if we don't do it in a future video, but we leave you with images of some of the stations to give you an idea of the beauty. And in the description of the video we will place a link to the Lisbon Metro website dedicated to presenting in detail the art in the stations.
the Electricos, literally electrics, is the name Lisbon's trams receive. They are probably the city's most emblematic means of transport. It's not as fast as the metro, but in charm, in charm, it's unbeatable. This charm has meant that Lisbon's trams today have a kind of hybrid use, both as a means of transport for Lisboners and as a tourist attraction for visitors to the city. The destination almost doesn't matter. What counts is the experience of traveling on an old transport while watching life go by through the window, through narrow streets and up and down the hills of Lisbon. Lisbon's trams network has six carreras, six lines. Five of them run classic vehicles, Lisbon's most beautiful historic wooden trams, and the sixth uses a modern type of tram very similar to those seen in many other European cities. Let's go back to the map. Line 12 is a short circular line, originating and terminating in Baixa at Martin Moniz. It goes around the castle and circulates through the Alfama district before crossing Baixa back to the starting point. This is a good line for those who want a quick tram ride. Line 15 is the longest line and the only one on which modern articulated trams run. It departs from Figueira Square and runs to the Algés region of Greater Lisbon. It is an essential line for tourists because it allows you to reach the LX factory, the MAAT museum and the Belém district and all its attractions. Line 18 leaves from Cais do Sotere and goes to a residential area in the Ajuda district. It can be useful to go to the LX factory or the Ajuda National Palace. Line 24 departs from Luis de Camões Square in Lisbon's Bairro Alto, crosses the Principe Real neighborhood and goes to the Campo Lide neighborhood. This is an option for those staying along the line who want to travel by tram. Line 25 departs from Figueira Square, crosses the Baixa, passes Cais do Sodre and goes up to Campo de Urique. If you want an alternative route to get to Campo de Urique, number 25, which does not run on Saturdays on Sundays may be an option. Finally, Route 28 is the favorite of tourists visiting Lisbon, connecting Baixa with Campo de Urique and passing through many of Lisbon's points of interest along the way. Line 28 takes a very complete and diverse route. It starts by crossing the narrow streets of the Alfama district with almost impossible curves. On its way down towards the center of Lisbon, it passes in front of the cathedral. Once in Baixa, it crosses Rua Augusta in the heart of the city and starts to climb up to the Bairro Alto. It passes in front of the Assembly of the Republic and the Basilica of Estrela before heading towards the Praceres Cemetery area. Completing the route there and back is a great plan in Lisbon, but we'd like to share two tips on Route 28 to enhance your experience. The first tip is that when there are lots of tourists in Lisbon, and this can happen any month of the year, it can be very difficult to get on the tram, which is very small, at the stops in the central region. Therefore, we recommend that you try to warranty yourself a seat by getting on the 28th at the initial stop at Martin Moniz Square. The second tip is to take extreme care with your personal belongings, not only on this tram route, but on all of them. There are a lot of tourists crammed in a very small space and pickpockets make a part in this context. You may also see a red tram, which is a tourist-only transport that is not part of the city's public transport. It is quite expensive and, in our opinion, does not offer you anything you will not find in the normal trams. In the classic trams, the old wooden trams, you get on through the front entrance. You validate your journey with your card at the machine next to the driver, or if you don't have one, you buy a ticket from him. In the modern articulated trams, you can get on at any door and validate your ticket at the machines in all the carriages. If you want to buy an individual ticket, there are machines inside the tram where you can buy them. Each tram line has its own timetable. In the description of the video we will put a link so you can check them out. Close contenders with trams for the title of Lisbon's most iconic form of transport, elevadores and ascensores, solve a basic problem in a city with so many hills and slopes. How to overcome the gradients and survive the attempt. The most famous are the Elevador de Santa Justa, the Ascensor da Gloria, the Ascensor da Bica and the Ascensor do Labra, all of which are easily accessible as they are located in the city center. 
These ones elevators are lifts that go up vertically, allowing you to overcome a large difference in height. There are several in the city and almost all of them are free of charge. One lift system allows you to go up to near the castle, another one to the Mirador de Santa Lucia in the Alfama district. The only paid lift is the most famous of them all, the Elevador de Santa Justa, which allows you to leave Baixa and comfortably reach Chiado without shedding a drop of sweat. The magnificent lift has a majestic wrought iron structure and its silhouette marks an unmistakable presence in the center of Lisbon. It is also one of the busiest attractions in the city and the queues are usually slow. That is, slow lines going up in the Baixa Chiado direction because on the way down, the queue, when there is one, is much faster, as happened to us on our last visit. A queue of more than an hour to go up, no queue at all to go down. At the top of the elevator in the Chiado, there is a structure that can be accessed free of charge with wonderful views of Lisbon and at the top of the lift is a pay-as-you-go observation deck. In addition to the elevators, in Lisbon you will also find ascensores, which are funiculars that go up sloping streets. There are three ascensores in Lisbon. One very popular one, the Ascensor da Bica, which allows you to go up from the Cais do Sodré region to the Bajo Alto. The lower station is inside a house. The way up offers very picturesque images and at the upper station you will have plenty of photo opportunities with a curious transport. Another popular funicular is the Ascensor da Gloria. It runs from Restauradores Square to the Bajo Alto, very close to the Mirador de San Pedro de Alcántara. When we went to shoot the images for this program, the funicular was closed for maintenance. So we show you a couple of pictures we took on previous trips. Finally, the third funicular, the least visited by tourists, the oldest in the city, is the Ascensor do Lavra. It goes from Avenida da Liberdade to near the viewpoint at Jardim do Torel. If you want to have a funicular almost all to yourself, take the Lavra funicular. At the lower and upper stations of each funicular, you will see the operating hours. You get on the front and validate your ticket at a machine identical to the ones on buses and trams. If you need to, you can buy a ticket from the driver. An important tip about ascensores and elevadores tickets. A single ticket bought at the time of travel is quite expensive. Two round trip tickets cost almost more than a 24 hour ticket. If you want to ride the funiculars and the Santa Justa lift, buy a 24 hour ticket, we will talk about it at the end of the video, and take advantage of it to visit all of them in the same day. You will save a fortune. Autocarros are Lisbon's buses. They are another important part of the city's public transport system. The advantage is that they reach many places where neither the metro nor the trams do. For example, the castle, and also give you the right to see Lisbon from street level. The disadvantage is that there are 142 lines and it takes more effort to understand the bus network than the metro or trams. At the bus stops, you will be able to check the approximate bus schedules, which depend on the line and the day of the week. It is normal that at weekends the frequency of buses is lower. During the early hours of the morning, there are special buses, the Rede da Madrugada from Monday to Sunday, and the night buses at weekends. The people of Lisbon queue at the bus stop and respect the queue. You get on the bus at the front and validate your ticket at the machine to the left of the driver. In Lisbon, there is also the traditional hop-on, hop-off tourist bus. We are going to post a link so you can check the details of the service about which we want to make a video in the future. Comboios are the trains in Portugal. They are a great way to travel around the country, but you are unlikely to use them to travel within the city of Lisbon. Tourists tend to use the trains for two popular day trips. The first one departs from Cais do Sodré station and goes to Cascais following the coast. And the second one departs from Rocio station in the direction of beautiful Sintra. Some of the most important train stations in Lisbon are, in addition to the aforementioned Cais do Sodré, which is served by the Green Metro Line, and Rocio, which is served by the Blue Metro Line, the Santa Polonia Station, served by the Blue Metro Line, and Oriente, served by the Red Line. From the latter two stations, trains depart for the north of Portugal.
Although not a form of transport for getting around Lisbon itself, boats are a constant presence in the city's landscape. The boats are a public river transport that allows the inhabitants of the southern bank of the Tagus River to travel to Lisbon mainly to work. For tourists, they offer the possibility to take a beautiful trip along the Tagus estuary for a very cheap price. The main Lisbon boat lines are the one that leaves from the Belém neighborhood, visits Porto Brandão and ends in Trafaria, the one that leaves from Caixo Sodré and goes to Casillas, perfect if you want to go to the Sanctuary of Cristo Rey. The line leaving from Caixo Sodré and going to Seychelles. The line leaving from Caixo Sodré and going to Montijo. And the line that leaves from Terreiro do Passo and goes to Barreiro. The companies responsible for the boats are Transtejo and Soflusa, which use all types of boats, from modern catamarans to vessels over 40 years old. The city's two main river ports are Cais do Sodré and Terreiro do Passo, both connected to the metro. They are modern and well-organized terminals. Inside, just find the terminal from which your boat will depart and wait for boarding clearance. Sit back and enjoy the ride. A boat ride, even a short one to Casillas, is a great plan and allows you to enjoy beautiful views of Lisbon. There are ticket offices at all terminals and you can also pay with your Lisbon transport card if you have valid credits on it. Just bring it to the machine next to the entrance barrier. Finally, for those who prefer the comfort of a private vehicle, Lisbon's extensive fleet of taxis is an economical option as long as you meet an honest taxi driver, which is the majority, but not all, in Lisbon. Another option for getting around Lisbon is the TVDE, known in many other parts of the world by the name of the company operating the service, the best known of which is Uber. In Lisbon, the companies with the largest fleets are Uber and Bolt. The main advantage of both of these over taxi drivers is that you know the cost of the ride before you get into the vehicle, so you don't have to worry about being cheated out of a ride. If you are already familiar with the platforms, open the app when you arrive in Lisbon to find out the cost of the journeys you want to make. To end the video, let's talk about the tickets you will use to pay for your trips in Lisbon, with the exception of the aforementioned taxis, Uber and Bolt, which you will pay for with cash or via the app. Although there are different companies responsible for the public transport in Lisbon, to pay for travel on the metro, trams, buses, elevators and funiculars, trains and boats, you only need to have a single card valid in all of them, which can have two names, Viva Viagem or Sete Colinas. These are two different names for the same card, which is nothing more than an electronic wallet, the place where you store the banknotes you are going to use. In the same way that you keep in your wallet notes of different values, in the Viva Viagem or Sech Colinas card, you keep the notes you are going to use in Lisbon. You can only store one type of ticket at a time. You can carry, for example, a single ticket and a 24-hour ticket. You have to use up the credit on one before you can reload a different ticket. The card has two important features. It is individual, so you cannot share it, and it is reusable. When you run out of credit, you can top it up without having to buy another card. As it is reusable, you only have to buy it once. Today, it costs 50 cents, and it is purchased at ticket machines, as we will see in a moment. The card is valid for one year from the first use, so don't throw it away if you plan to return to Lisbon, as you will be able to use it again within that year. An important note, keep the card carefully. It is quite fragile and if you are not careful it can be damaged. Every time you load credits onto the card keep the receipt. If a problem occurs on the card the receipt might allow you to recover the credits loaded on it. Children up to three years of age do not pay to travel on Lisbon transport. Children four years and older must have the same ticket as adults. What can be loaded on the cards? For those going to Lisbon for sightseeing the most interesting options are 
you could load a single ticket or a one-way ticket which can be used among others on the metro buses, trams, elevators and funiculars. This ticket allows you to travel from A to B within a maximum of 60 minutes. It allows you to change modes of transport with one exception. If you leave a metro station, you cannot re-enter without having to pay again. It is an option for those who think they will use very little transport during their stay in Lisbon. You could load a ticket valid for 24 hours. It allows unlimited use of the above-mentioned transport for a period of 24 hours starting from the first use of the ticket. If you start using it at 7 p.m., the 24-hour ticket will be valid until 7 p.m. the next day. The 24-hour ticket covers all your transport needs within the city of Lisbon. And if you want to forget about worrying about buying tickets, it can be an excellent option. If you are planning to use Lisbon's trams, elevadores or funiculars, the day ticket becomes an even better investment, as single tickets purchased on vehicles such as trams, elevadores and ascensores are expensive. Finally, you could choose the Zapping Fare, which is not really a ticket as such, but a credit in money that you put on, on your card and which allows you to pay for your journeys. The minimum amount you can charge is 3 euros, and then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, up to a maximum balance of 40. The advantage of Zapping is that for each trip you make in this mode, you get a better price than when you buy a single ticket. So today, a single ticket loaded on the card for travel on the metro, bus or tram costs 150. If you pay with credits in the Zapping system, 135 is discounted. With the Zapping fare, you can travel for 60 minutes, changing transport if necessary. For those who don't want to buy a 24-hour ticket, the Zapping fare is the second best option. You put credit on the card and spend it little by little. With credits in the Zapping mode, you can also pay for boat trips across the river. The single transport ticket cannot be used on the boats. You will have to buy a specific individual ticket for the boats. And the cheaper 24-hour ticket does not allow you to use the boats either. Here's how to buy the tickets. Look for a ticket machine. Note that some of them only allow you to pay by credit card. The initial step will depend on whether or not you already have a card. Let's simulate the purchase of a ticket for those who do not yet have a transport card. Select the English language and tap on Without Reloadable Card Card Purchase on the initial screen. On the next screen, choose how many cards you want. We are going to simulate the purchase of one, but if there are more than one of you, now is the time to change the quantity. Click Continue. You will now see the different ticket options you can load on the card you are buying. Remember that you can only choose one type of ticket. The first option is the single ticket, the second option is the zapping, which is the placement of money credit on the card, and the third option is the 24-hour ticket. Let's buy a single ticket. On the next screen, we could choose to buy more than one single ticket to use later, but for now, we're just going to buy one. If you select one here, one ticket will be loaded on each card you buy. If you choose two, two tickets will be loaded on each card, and so on and so forth. And now we see a summary of the purchase. We paid 50 for the card and 150 for a single ticket charged to the card. Total to be paid two euros. Now we have to choose whether we're going to pay with cash or with cards. It is easy to understand the right-hand panel of the machine. There is a part reserved for payment by card, another for payment with banknotes, and another for payment with coins. Once you have finished paying, collect your card from the bottom of the machine, as well as any change owed to you by the machine. Also take the receipt and keep it in case you have any problems with your card. What if you already have the card and want to top it up? Let's see how to do it. Let's load the card we already have with credit for the value of 10 euros. On the initial screen, choose with reloadable card, insert card to reload, read. Next, insert the card on the right hand side of the machine on the central bit where it's written travel card reload. Back to the screen. If you just wanted to check the balance left on your card, it would be shown on the screen now and you could cancel the operation. Let's choose the format we want in the English version called a stored value. But if you wanted to, you could choose a single ticket 
or a 24 hour ticket. Now you have to choose the amount of credit you want to load in the card. In our simulation, it will be 10 euros. We pay for it, and once you've finished paying, collect any change due from the tray at the bottom of the machine, and do remember to retrieve the card from the slot. You might be asked during the process whether you want to associate your taxpayer's number to the purchase. Select no. We feel the machines are quite easy to use. If you want to buy several cards at the same time, you can do it in one go. But if you want to top up several existing cards, you will have to do it one by one. You cannot top up several cards at the same time. Ready to move around Lisbon. As always, if you have any questions, take advantage of the commentary box to ask. If you found the video useful and want to leave us a thumbs up, we'll be grateful. And even more so if you dedicate a super thanks to our work. You will see now on the screen a video where we explain in quite a lot of detail how to go from Lisbon Airport to the center of the city. Very useful if you are arriving in Lisbon for the first time. We'll see you in that video.